I would like to call the Peoria Public Schools District 150 Board of Education Committee of the Whole Meeting for January 27th, 2014 to order. Would you please call the roll? Here. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? It's behind us. Yes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First on our agenda is awards and recognition. If Lana Myers would come up and present our award for this month, please. Yes. Good evening. Yeah. Good evening. Peoria's Finest Teacher is a monthly recognition that we are sponsoring for those members of PFT that go above and beyond, exemplify best practices in teaching, and or reach out to the community and schools and parents involved in our schools. The teachers in this district work so hard to serve the children and families of Peoria each day, and we want to showcase this positive effort. We want to thank our winner's principal, Katie Powers, and any faculty, friends, and family that are here in support of our winner. Our nominator of this month's winner is Val Ray, and this month's Peoria's Finest Teacher is Tracy Greenwood at Valeska Hinton. Come on up, Tracy, and congratulations. Since we only have one chair, I'll sit for just a second. Val, her nominator, had a conflict tonight, so I'm going to read just a little bit from Val's nomination for Tracy, who is a wonderful teacher and a wonderful person. Tracy works with all teachers and children in our building. She supports children in and out of the classroom. The children that she serves make huge gains in their speech and language goals. She has been in the district for a long time, in fact so long that she has children of children that she worked with. And it is time for her to be honored for all of her hard work for our children and families that she helps. Tracy never misses kids on her schedule. And if she does have an IEP meeting, she will try her best to move her schedule around so that she sees all kids on her schedule for that day. She has worked with Val to make a picture schedule for a child in her classroom that is not one of Val's goals and not one of Tracy's, but she knows that this child needs it. Congratulations, Tracy. You're welcome to speak. It's been an honor to spend 27 years with District 150. I'm a believer and I do believe that Remarkable happens every day in 150. To the point that I have a daughter at Valeska Hinton and a son at Lindbergh. So, as I said, it's been an honor to serve my parents and assist them as possible, whenever possible, to meet their needs. And always, as my children at home, my Valeska kids have my heart, so thank you. Congratulations. I, I just like to say that I had the pleasure of working with Tracy 27 years ago when I was the secretary for the district, and I'm sure I know that this honor is very well deserved. Congratulations, Tracy. This evening's board meeting, as is the case with our second meeting every month, is a committee of the whole meeting. This was designed to be a forum for detailed public discussion of significant issues within the District 150 organization between staff, administration, and the board. And so the board and public could be better informed on complex issues. That's one of the reasons we start the committee of the whole meetings at six, a half hour earlier than our 
regular board meetings. The Committee of the Whole agenda includes a public comment section after the deliberation agenda. And this has been our practice for about two years. The time available for each speaker is two minutes. Members of the board and administration listen, but do not respond directly during the public comment period. It's not a question and answer session, and it's not a forum for debate. So if you have comments or thoughts, in addition to the public comment section, uh, you can reach all members of the board through email, phone calls, letters, or other type of correspondence. So with that, we would also go to announcements. Does anyone have any announcements? Dr. Lathan. Yes, one announcement. District 150 will be closed tomorrow. We will follow the same uh, schedule as today. 12-month employees will report to work. Uh, building level uh, schools, uh, staff, and students will be closed on tomorrow, with Wednesday being a full day of instruction. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, I would like to uh, note the passing of someone who was uh, an integral part of the school community for many, many years. Uh, Ken Heinrichs passed away January 19th at age 90. He was a graduate of Franklin Grade School, Peoria High School, and Bradley University with the, both his undergraduate and master's degrees. He taught at Lincoln Grade School, and then he moved to Manual where he taught math and physical education. He coached the Manual football team for 17 years and won 75% of the games that he coached. That included a 30-game win streak, which is remarkable. His teams also won seven of the Mid-State Eight or Mid-State Nine conference titles and five city championships. And in 1959, he was named Illinois High School Coach of the Year, and that was the first of many honors he received both locally and statewide. Following retirement from District 150, he served as Peoria County Regional Superintendent of Schools for 12 years, along with his service with many other educational and civic organizations. Uh, I knew Mr. Heinrichs. Uh, he was the uncle of a friend of mine in high school, a fine guy, and uh, I'm sure he'll be missed by the family and the community, and we wish the family the best under these circumstances. And uh, our thoughts and prayers are with the family that uh, has lost this uh, very valuable contributor to the community. Thank you. If there are no other announcements, could we proceed with approval of the minutes? Could I have a motion to approve the minutes from the meeting of January 13th, 2014? So moved. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Madam Secretary? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to our information items. Uh, Dr. Lathan, we'll start with uh, remarkable rule number two, I believe. Yes, it's that time of year as we start our high school registration. We have our high school principals here tonight, and also um, Tom Bloomer, our principal of Woodruff Career and Technical Center. We have two additional programs that will be opening uh, in the fall at Woodruff, and so we want to spotlight those tonight and share information on registration. Good evening, Dr. Lathan and Board of Education. All of you should have received the new catalog this year that went out to our current eighth graders through our rising juniors. We hope that no current seniors receive this book because we want to walk them across the stage in May. Um, this year, we've added a little bit to the book. I'm sure that you looked at it. We added our career technical pathways that we have. Um, so that our parents could be more informed of what we're doing with that. We also added some additional courses, such as sociology. Um, we listened to our teachers. They sent in suggestions for courses that they wanted to add this year, and sociology was one of those. We're also adding percu percussion. Uh, in the band, a lot of kids want to be drummers, but they need to understand there's more to drumming than just drumming and running around. So our band director said, we want to have drum lines, but we want to inform them of how the drums are. So we've added some additional courses for each of the schools. Um, we're excited about that. Our online registration actually starts tomorrow. Uh, the high school counselors have done a great job of going ahead and informing our online registration is for current 9th through 11th graders. It opens tomorrow and it closes at midnight on February the 4th. 
Also this year we um, are continuing with our curriculum fairs. Because of the closure of school tomorrow, Peoria High will hold their curriculum fair. Originally it was supposed to be tomorrow night. Each of you got these flyers and all of this information is also on the District 150 website. Tomorrow night was supposed to be Peoria High's. We have moved their curriculum fair to Thursday night. Each student goes to their home school to register. So Manual and Peoria High will both have theirs on Thursday night, but that should not be an issue since you register at your home school. Rich Woods will have their curriculum fair on Wednesday night. All curriculum fairs are from 4.30 until 6.30, and this is a great time for parents, for students to come out to see the various courses that are offered, to talk with teachers, to see what is required in those courses. The computer labs will also be open for those families that need access to computers to complete the online registration. We also will have our PTOs. We've invited them to come out because at the high school level, we still want parents involved. They probably need to be more involved at the high school level um, to help make informed decisions for their child's future as well as to keep up with all that happens with all the changes emotionally and socially that goes on at the high school level. Counselors will also be available to talk about how to register, what do you look for. Also, if you're registering to go to colleges, what classes should, we, should you take in those um, pathways? Even though that information's in the book, we also will have people on hand each night to answer that. Administration in all the buildings will also be there, as well as our famous Mr. Tom Bloomer. He and his staff will be available at each of the curriculum fairs. We're excited about Woodruff because we're expanding the opportunities that, we're all, that we are offering there. Our students will take tours this week at Woodruff um, to see how, what's involved in the classes, what certifications they can graduate with from high school when they leave us. And Mr. Bloomer is going to talk about a couple of the new courses that we are adding this year at Woodruff. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lathan and School Board for inviting me tonight. Um, first of all, if you're going to have a, a great program, you have to have the right students. And I think for the contemporary, um, not only the contemporary school, but our Career and Technical Center, my colleagues behind me have supported sending the right students to Woodruff. You have to have the right fit for the contemporary school, or for the um, Career and Technical Center. The, the students who come to us, and I don't know, probably a thousand in the last three years, you have to look at those students have in, in some degree languished in our schools for the last, for, for their career. These are the sorts of students that would come into my classroom when I was a teacher with their parents and their parents expressing that we, my child is, is an intelligent child, but they're not performing in school. And their, their display of their intelligence comes through hands-on activities. And that is done through the programs at Career and Tactical Center. So the, my colleagues here and their counselors have sent the perfect students. And I encourage them to keep sending uh, the right students, as well as the parents back here. Uh, we encourage you to look at our our school along with the contemporary school because because both schools are housed at Woodruff. We have some exciting changes coming up at our school this year. We have uh, barbering will continue and we hope to get the guys out on the floor and actually cutting hair along with our cosmetologists. Um, we also have a brand new uh, for next year the culinary arts and the culinary arts will will have uh, a certification after the two-year programs in which they can go out and they can be in the uh, food service uh, industry and then finally our CNA uh, program which is the certified nursing uh, uh, certification and the the coming out of that program our uh, health oc they'll be able to go out into nursing homes and hospitals and actually have a career or go off into college so we're excited about the changes that are coming our program continues to build and it's it's been a very exciting experience for me uh, having only been there a few months but it has been a real eye-opener about what the possibilities of what Woodruff can be We wanted to show you the updates that we've done. Um, if you remember last year, we created a video. We're not gonna show you the entire video. It is quite long, but we did want to showcase our barbering, 
our culinary and our health hot for you this evening just so you can see and spread the word of the great things happening at Woodruff. So we'll have our very own Michelle Seibel start the video for us. trade uh, was because I wanted to have a career when I uh, went off to college. The reason I chose a class because this was one of my passions to do. Actually, when I was younger, I wanted to be a barber and being in this program actually helped me. My name is Joseph Wheeler. I'm a barber teacher here at Woodruff Career Technical Center. It's a two-year program. That they start their junior year and they will finish up their senior year. It's a 1,500-hour program. At the end of the program, they will have all their credentials to go take their state board test. It opens a lot of doors. Uh, they can go out into the workforce and be a professional barber, and if so, open up their own barbershop. shop. Like, it just passed because I wanted to fall back outside of just in case. Like, I go to college and things didn't work out. What makes this class unique is uh, basically being able to come down here and uh, learn a new trade and uh, learn the ways of barbering. Hands-on experience and the knowledge of barbering, they will be cutting different type of hairstyles and using scissors to do scissor work, clipper over comb technique, the mastering the razor blade and how to do shades and linings and just a, whole, a wide range of different hairstyles. What makes this class fun or interesting is being able to come, socialize, enjoy yourself, be yourself. The laughs, the jokes that we share, the conversations that we share, uh, the hairstyles that we come up with. The type of student I would love to have in my classroom is a focused student. The student who has the will and desire to be part of this program and finish this program so they can walk out of here a professional bar. Hard work, cutting every day, um, reading, a lot of reading, a lot of tests, just, just work hard to get where you want to be. A typical day is like you come in, clock in, spend some time in the classroom, do some book work, and uh, then we most likely come down to the clinical floor and you know we work on our mannequins. We work on our mannequins or we have permission from our teacher about if we want to cut each other's hair or whatever. You know, just to work on each other and keep everything else right. We will be able to work on regular customers. After they get so many hours, then we'll invite the public in so they can start performing their services on the public. I recommend this class to my peers because it's a big opportunity that nobody would want to pass up and it can help you be successful in life. If you go on our district website, you'll be able to see these. We understand the quality. You can't really hear all, a lot of the talking, but they are up. Mr. Copeland has put them up on the registration website. Please remember that the culinary 
and the um, CNA classes do not have kids in them yet because we start those next year, but we did create the videos to explain to our kids what's coming and for parents. Do you have any questions about registration? Yes, ma'am. First of all, I want to just, the CNA program that's going to start next year, when those students finish that, will they have their certificate so they can go right out and work? Yes, they will. They'll have to take a, a test. They pass the test and we prepare them for that. So they should be ready to go, okay. ready for a career. And the other thing I wanted to ask, with the online registration, is there somebody meeting with the students 9th through 11th grade at the high school so that they aren't just going on and, and picking classes? Is somebody sitting down with each of them and going through that before they actually do the registration? Yes, the counselors have met with the kids to, t to teach them how to register and, and when they do the online registration, that doesn't, they're not locked into those classes. After registration closes, the counselors will meet with each student individually to go through what they picked. For instance, if I'm a freshman and I pick junior English, my counselor is going to say to me, Ravonda, you should have taken, you have to take sophomore English first. But they've explained to the kids how to choose the classes, but if there is a mistake, the counselor, when they have the one-on-one -on -one meeting, will be able to go back and, and complete that. And Ms. Costing. School. How long, is, how long is the culinary school going to be, the length of it? It's a two-year program. They and start as juniors, and then they'll graduate as seniors. Okay. With this program, um, is there going to be like a certification for sanitation during the process of this course? It, it's called Safe School, the curriculum, and, and Safe Serve, excuse me. <laughs> and um, they'll have, again, just like CNA, they'll be career ready, or they can go right on to college with that certification. But yeah, they'll be ready to, to go out. And, yes, and that's right. We'll, we'll have a restaurant as part of our you'll be served. You'll, you definitely have to let us know. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? I have a question. uh, Reverend Butler. Yes. Um, as we talk about the students being able to turn this into business, what's available in terms of a curriculum of how to manage money or grow a business, that sort of thing? That is included in, in the curriculums. Um, our instructors have not only the the nuts and bolts of, of what to do as a barber, et cetera. But a big part, a big push is to establish a business. Some, some of our students will go off to college with these skills, but others will open business. It'll be great for the economy, great for the community. It's very exciting. Any other questions? I don't have any question per se. I appreciate what we heard here tonight. And I think it does show to the community that over the past few years, I know at least since I've been on the board, there's been the request or the question of what are you all doing for vocational tra trades so that some of the students who are not going to go to college would be able to come out and begin a business, a career. Uh, slowly but surely, we've gotten there. So just looking for even more of the results of that. Ms. Crawford, um, can, can you, the two of you touch on some of our AP offerings and uh, maybe some of the college prep side of it. Um, what kind of credits can students achieve within our high schools so that they get a leg up on their college studies? We continue to build our AP courses and our offerings um, with our students growing our AP program. We've had two AP parent nights this year at the parent universities to inform parents that if kids take these classes, it number one, it looks good on the resume, but especially if they earn a three or higher, that also can get them college credit, which sometimes eliminates those basic level classes they have to take, and it helps financially for the parent and the student. So we are pushing that. We have AP coordinators at each of the high schools. Um, each one of the high schools this year grew how many AP courses they're actually offering. I think the fact that the district is also supporting it and standing behind it by paying for the test. These, the schools are also offering AP review sessions for their kids to help them. And they're treating it like a college class. They're even encouraged, one of the things we encourage parents is when your students say, I want to go to Barnes and Nobles for the study group, they're really going to Barnes and Noble for a study group. Some of the teachers are even going to Barnes and Nobles because that's what you do when you're in college. You get together and we're, we're trying to form that atmosphere. 
We um, will hold our second AP Saturday this Saturday for our teachers. We had one in the fall, very productive. Our administrators are right there with their teachers, listening to their teachers on what they need to be doing in the building, what we want. Um, we are in the process of making an advanced placement video um, very similar to the Woodruff video so that we can even share more of what we're doing for AP. Um, so that, those are some of the things we are doing. And how about student participation? Do you find students are eager, to, I mean, good, good numbers in these classes? I, I had to give that to my, my peers behind me since they're on the ground, but I think you all have seen an increase in the number of students taking them, correct? I were on the, I can echo that, but also would be uh, going into a four, our fourth year of AVID, AVID encourages, and it's part of the AVID program that students enroll in AV coursework. So we can we see the numbers grow in each year. A strong selling point at Richwood, I believe, is the fact that they're going to earn some college credit if they get a career higher, and that the district, the only district around that, pays for the test, and we have 23 sections of AP this year. We gave over 680 tests last year. Parents have been very thankful. I know at the AP Parent Sessions at AP Parent University, there were some parents in the sessions where their kids are taking them, but they wanted to hear strategies to help their kids at home, which is what we gave them. But they thanked us over and over because they feel like the district is supporting their child. I, I would just yeah. conclude my questions with a comment. A parent recently approached me. Um, child is a recent grad at Richwood's uh, engineering major at Illinois. He commented to me that he felt he was ahead of where the other kids from around the state were. So I thought that was I, that was really nice to hear as a board member. So thank you. Um, I don't have much of a voice, but you know that uh, whenever we talk about. Woodruff and registration, I have to talk about how fantastic it is to go down and see the kids at the Voc Tech Center when they start their, you know, talking to their feet and mumbling like high school students often do. Um, and after they've been there for a semester, they're looking you in the eye and shaking your hand and they're learning not just these hard job skills, but they're learning a lot of soft people skills and they are enthusiastic and confident. Uh, the salon at the Cosmetology Center is open to the public three days a week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They will paint your toes or cut your hair. And I usually try to wear seasonally inappropriate shoes to show off my toes, but it was too cold, so. Mr. Coy. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I have a question of Mr. Blunier. When you started off talking about things basically going right now with the students, you mentioned that the principals know how to send the right student. Is that another way of saying we are um, able to pinpoint the interests and other needs that students have in learning that mm -hmm. were that perhaps was not being done and we had lost students academically, that this is kind of closing or working with that? Well, there was, there was no place for those students to go. And before my time, I know there was vocational tech here in Peoria. And then it went away for quite a while, and those students weren't being served. <clears throat> the counselors at the three traditional high schools have done such a great job of finding the right students. And I, I'm, I don't know how they do it, but um, Would one of the principals be able to speak to what you've done to make sure that these students could access the vocational tech program? I think it just starts off with the team effort of promoting what's offered at Woodruff and getting just word of mouth, uh, the teachers talking about it, the administrators and counselors, and just letting the students know that here's some other opportunities out there that may not be offered in our building, but we have the uh, opportunity to send you to these classes Peoria High a bus is leaving every two hours. Uh, two class periods and take you know, hundreds of students down there. So the word of mouth, the kids talk. So I think that's the most powerful. These videos, the counselors, and just knowing that there is more opportunities in just about 50 than there used to be. 
So not only for the students, but for the counselors, as you mentioned, they are feeling more empowered with being able to help students move along with their future. Comments. Well, and, and you know, just on, uh, along those same lines, I think many of our students, when you get your first job, my first job was at Wendy's, uh, and you know, which is a fine job, I guess, but you know, it didn't make much money, and it wasn't going any place. Our students who go to Woodruff in the career and technical side end up having uh, a job that can pay them some, can pay their bills, and so you can go in either direction. Uh, what's gratifying is to, as an educator of 25 years and 20 years in the classroom, of, of seeing students who had those skills and there was no outlet for them, to now have an outlet for that. And I think the confidence you talked about comes from being valued. And when you're in school for 12 years and you're taking courses that don't address your gifts and talents, mm -hmm. that's discouraging. Mm -hmm. And so now they have a place to go, and a place that's challenging and recognizes the gifts, and they can go any place with it. So it, it has been a real eye-opener for me. The, the vocational programs in the past have been unfairly seen as a dumping ground. You can't, oh, you can't, you don't like math, you're not very good at math or reading, we'll, we'll just send you over to a vocational uh, program. There, it's very challenging. All the programs are very challenging with high requirements to get in. So it has been a, it's been a great experience for me, I know, and, and I know for the thousand or so who have come through the program in the last three years. Ms. Wilmer. And, and I think you've sort of already answered this, but it sounds to me like you've got students coming from all three high schools. That's right. And, and are you seeing the program still growing every year? In numbers? Yeah, now my first year, I, I, I know it has. I, I can't tell you how much I can find that out for you, but it, it absolutely has. I can tell you our numbers for this week's tours, um, 96, 86, 50. So that is, that's up by 10 to 15 from each year. And I think the other thing is, one of the little girls from Richwoods, I, until she got bus transportation, I was picking her up and taking her there, and she said to me, this is going to be great when I go to college because she wants to do one thing in college but her love is hair and she said now I can be a cosmetologist and I don't have to work a nighttime job necessarily while I'm in school so these this the courses are not just for people who don't want to go to college it's also for kids who want to go to college but they also want to be able to do something else so I think that's great one of the I know you couldn't hear but one of the young men alluded to that also in his in his video um, and you also heard him say we have to read a lot read 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 so <laughs> it's not as Mr. Bloomer said it's it's challenging they have to know math they have to know biology they have to be able to mix chemicals they have to be able to read they have to be able to write um, so they're saying we have to step it up. I just want to say one more thing to Ms. Johnson and those of you who worked on some of the additions to the high school uh, courses this year. Thank you for adding in sociology. I was just saying to the attorney here, I said I had that when I was in high school. We're talking in the early 70s and it's proved beneficial since I'm involved in social services working with people and for those who have a love or know they want to do human services or things like that being introduced uh, through a sociology course is just 
I mean, it's right on the mark. So thank you for bringing that back. So there's your first guest speaker, guys. <laughs> there you go. Anyone else? Just, uh, I believe this is the second year we've done all high school registration online. Is that correct? Okay, so every high school registration is now done online. That's right. Okay, uh, Mr. Bloomer, I have, I have a, I'm gonna put you on the spot here. I just asked you a question. This is, you're, you're in sort of the middle of your first year at Woodruff. Yes. So what is the most important thing you've learned in that experience? <laughs> that is on the spot. You when can take I, your time. You can think about that for a well, moment if you like. When I cry at night. No. <laughs> Join the club. I try to muffle it so I don't wake up my kids. No. Uh, the, um, the most important thing I've learned, just what I talked about and, and how vocational tech or the Career and Tactical Center has finally addressed the needs of students who felt left out. Um, and along those same lines, uh, we also have a contemporary school there that we're looking to build. And uh, that's been very uh, challenging and intriguing to the staff, as, as, and many people don't know. Many people don't know, even within the district, that there are three very separate schools uh, with uh, three separate student bodies and um, the safe school and those are the, the students who have been expelled, uh, the contemporary school, and that school, uh, um, you have to apply to go to that school. It's, it's for, school, for students who uh, maybe f don't fit in into the traditional school, but you do have to apply for that. Um, and then the Career and Tactical Center. Um, one, one of the other things that has been gratifying and surprising has been the um, many interests within the community for s wanting to see this succeed. And I think getting the word out that the school exists and to remove the, um, the barriers that, that many, many people feel about vocational um, education and uh, getting the community into the school. Th there is a, 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 a jumble of feelings about Woodruff because of the three different schools in there. And, and I think one of, my, one of my duties will be to, to differentiate and get the word out to the community. I think that there is a fear because the safe school is at Woodruff that um, the contemporary students and the career and tactical students um, are not as safe, and, and, and that isn't true. The, they are, uh, the safe school students are served. We think we serve them very well. We have a high success rate with them, but they're separate. They're on our third floor, and we've been successful in meeting the needs of all three schools. So. Um, it has been a whirlwind. It's very different from Calvin Coolidge, that's for sure. But it has been very, very exciting. And it is a program that I think um, will grow just because the programs and the teachers and the students are so dedicated. So that, that's a, a question that I ask myself all the time uh, about what, what, what's the next challenge. Well, I, I know you asked for that assignment. Pardon me? I believe you asked for that assignment, <laughs> as, I, as I'm yes. told. Yes, oh, I, I'm sorry. No. Yes, no. I did. I yeah. did. You, you wanted to be there. Yes, yes, okay. I wanted to be there. I, I love the challenge. I love the connection of this school to the community. It's a very unique uh, um, mission in this community. And there's so much room to grow. And um, that's very appealing. And we're trying to attract the, the right people, be it teacher or student, to the school. And um, so the first three years, I, uh, Ms. Johnson has done a, an incredible job of coordinating things because it takes a ton of coordination. Um, and, and it's a brand new school, starting a brand new school. And so it's had growing pains. but. Uh, the school board has supported it so well, and, and so I've, I've been very gratified. Exhausted all the time, but um, just really gratified. It is a good tired. 
Great. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Well, thank you to you and, and your staff there and those that are helping you get that done. That's really appreciated. It's a real example of what happens when people work together and have a common vision. And we thank you for that and wish you the best and encourage you to keep spreading the word. So okay. thank you very much. Thank you. On to the uh, respect of finances. Uh, Dr. Kenny, we have uh, purchase overs over $2,500. Does anyone have any questions on those? Okay. We've come to the uh, consent agenda. Uh, I could, uh, would appreciate a volunteer to read the consent agenda if they wouldn't mind. Mr. Crawford? Okay. Just make sure you get close to the mic. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now or later. Okay, before you do that, let, let me just say this as we get into the consent agenda because we have a consent agenda and then we have a deliberation agenda. And this really refers to both of those uh, activities. And, and this is in relation to two specific things, the uh, Human Resources Report, which is part of the consent agenda, and two action items on the deliberation agenda. And uh, specifically to the uh, issues at Charter Oak. So first of all, the investigation found no evidence of any student cheating or wrongdoing, none whatsoever. And to put this in perspective, though, this is not just 26 students. It's not just about 26 students. It's about the majority of the special education students tested at Charter Oak over the past three years. Now, uh, we realize it's very difficult for parents of special education students to hear and understand that their child is not achieving at the academic levels they were led to believe in reviewing their students' ISAT achievement data. That brings us to the issue of the teachers involved. In reference to the Charter Oak teachers involved, the board has decided to issue a notice of remedy to two teachers for their failure to follow ISAT testing protocols for special education students. We're also asking the administration to reassign them to different schools effective February 4th. The board could have suspended both for up to 30 days without pay but declined that option. Both teachers had many years of experience and reported to violating ISAT testing protocol in administering the assessment to their special education students. Two other Charter Oak teachers will receive disciplinary consequences for misconduct directly from the administration in accordance with the teacher's collective bargaining agreement. This discipline does not require formal board action. In regards to the principal, the board offered to schedule a special board meeting last week on January 23rd to provide Mr. Wetterauer with the opportunity to meet with the board and to respond to the findings in the investigatory report. Mr. Wetterauer's attorney had a conflict on that date, so the board provided Mr. Wetterauer with a second opportunity to meet with the board in closed session earlier today to discuss the report. Mr. Wetterauer did not respond to the board's second offer to meet with him today. His attorney was advised that if his client was unavailable, or decline the opportunity to meet with the board, the board would consider his letter of January 16th as Mr. Wetterer's response to the investigation's finding. As outlined in our board policy 3 colon 6 0, every District 150 principal is expected to be the instructional leader in their building. This case is about a principal's lack of leadership and his, well, let's have it quiet right now. It's about If you persist in outbursts, we're going to ask you to be quiet. Thank you. <laughs> or something else. Thank you. As outlined in Board Policy 360, every District 150 principal is expected to be instructional leader in their building. This case is about a principal's lack of leadership and his failure to follow the, provide the direction, training, and oversight that are part of every principal's job in District 150. 
The discipline for Mr. Wetterauer includes the following. He will be re reassigned as a principal on special assignment in another building. There were additional actions the board could have taken up to and including Mr. Auer, Wetterauer's reclassification and termination from his position, but chose not to pursue those. Ms. Cushing will remain Charter Oaks principal for the rest of the school year. We have heard from many members of the Charter Oaks school community and realize our decisions will be extremely unpopular with many members of that community. It is a regrettable outcome, but the board is following the Illinois school code and our established board policies in taking these actions regardless of their popularity. The Illinois State Board of Education has received a copy of the investigation. We do not know if they will take any action or the timing of their decisions. However, this board has the right and responsibility to address issues of this nature regardless of the State Board of Education's actions. If you would please, Mr. Crawford, read the consent agenda. Thank you, President Cloyd. The items on tonight's consent agenda consist of item number one, gifts to the school district. This meeting totaling $2,767, year to date $81,453.40. Proposed action, the Board of Education accept the following donations be accepted and letters of appreciation be sent to the donors. A sword and gloves and mittens valued at $100 by the Peoria Medical Society Alliance to Whittier Primary. 24 school uniforms valued at $867 by PMSA to Whittier Primary. Gloves valued at $50 by Peoria Medical Society Alliance to Whittier Primary. $250 by the Transportation Club of Peoria to Whittier Primary, $1,000 by Reconcile Chloe to Woodruff McCreer and Technical Center to be used as startup funds for the T-shirt press, $500 by ExxonMobil to support math and science teachers. Donations totaling $11,388 were made to the Peoria Public Schools Foundation. P. Coyle, $1,000, Caterpillar Foundation, $7,000, PNC Foundation, $3,000, Eureka College, $388. Item number two, payment of bills. Item number three, human resources report. Proposed action, appointment, employment, appointment, employment compensation, performance, resignation, retirement, or discharge of an employee. Item number four, payment for travel. Item number five, Field trip approval. Proposed action. The Board of Education approved the field trip for the Richwoods Junior and Senior IB students to travel to Truman State University, Kirksville, Missouri, to participate in a campus visit on March 3, 2014, per board policy. There is no charge to students for this event. Item number six, appointment of Representative David Leach to the Public Building Commission. Proposed action that David Leach is appointed the Peoria Public School District's representative commissioner to the Public Building Commission of Peoria. The term for this appointment is five years. Item number seven, approval of resolution and intergovernmental agreement with the City of Peoria for assistance in the sale of six prospect properties owned by Peoria School District 150. Proposed action, the Board of Education approved the resolu resolution made and entered into this 27th day of January 2014 by and between the Board of Education of Peoria School District number 150, Peoria County, Illinois, and the City of Peoria, Peoria County, Illinois. The Board currently holds the title to the parcels of real estate commonly known as 2138 North Prospect, Peoria, Illinois, 2142 North Prospect, Peoria, Illinois, 2144 North Prospect, Peoria, Illinois, 2206 North Prospect, Peoria, Illinois, 2208 North Prospect, Peoria, Illinois, and 2212 North Prospect, Peoria, Illinois. The board, board no longer sees, uh, strike that, the board no longer needs the real estate for its educational needs and therefore desires to sell the real estate through cooperation with the city. Uh, Mr. President, that concludes the items on tonight's consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Crawford. Do any members of the board wish to pull any of these items for a separate vote? Could we have a motion then, please? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any discussion or questions? Dr. Kinney, if you could speak to item number seven. Yes, this gives us a little bit of flexibility in uh, selling those properties. Uh, for example, in, in some cases, we may want to trade these uh, properties with properties around Peoria High. So this gives a, v a vehicle to do that kind of a thing. Could you also speak to the uh, Public Building Commission appointment? Yes, uh, Representative David Leach has served on that board, I know, for uh, many, many years. And so this is really a reappointment 
uh, and he would serve that in that role through 2018 on the Public Building Commission. Thank you. Mr. Crawford. Uh, perhaps Ms. Johnson could speak to the field trip to Truman State. Truman State contacted Mr. Bowlby, the IB coordinator at Richwoods, and they are wanting to invite schools outside of Missouri to come and visit, and they're trying to attract IB students. So they ask us to come and help fund this trip to be able to come there. Any other questions? <coughs> Would you please call the roll? <coughs> Aye. 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 Thank you. We've come to the deliberation agenda. Um. Item number eight is the revocation of board probation. The proposed action is that the revocation of board probation listed on the report dated January 27, 2014 be approved as presented. Second. Aye. 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 Item nine is expulsions. The proposed action is that the expulsions listed on the report dated January 27, 2014 be approved as presented. Second. Aye. 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 Students expelled by the board are referred to by number, thereby, thereby ensuring privacy. Board action concerning the students has been decided in executive session. Item number 10 is one I referred to earlier. It is a resolution authorizing issue, issuance of a notice of remedial warning. The proposed action is a resolution authorizing issuance of notice of remedial warning to a tenured teacher, Deborah Lowe. May I have a... Motion and a second. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Would you call the roll, please? Aye. 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 Item 11, resolution authorizing issuance of a notice of a remedial warning Proposed action is a resolution authorizing issue, issuance of a notice of remedial warning to a tenured teacher, Joan Schiefling. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Ms. Patel, aye. Mrs. Ross, aye. Mr. Crawford, aye. 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 Thank you. We have now come to the place on our agenda where members of the public may address the school board on any topic. Please come to the table and give your name for the benefit of our minutes. The time limit for any one speaker is two minutes and the time limit for any one topic is eight minutes. No person less than 18 years of age may address the board unless accompanied by his or her parent, guardian, or teacher, except with unanimous consent of the board. Brenda Wilson. Would you please take a seat? Excuse me? Would you please take a seat? I'm sorry. Ma'am, please take a seat. This is, this is, I this, I, I please really take feel a comfortable seat. standing with all due respect, sir. Well, with all due respect, this is the way we do it in these meetings. Please sit down. The time that you guys have been sitting at this table, how often has a problem been brought to you regarding Charter Oak until now? I think the answer probably before this is zero because John Wetterauer is a problem solver. It is so amazing to me how all these interviews got twisted into something that they're not 
Not one person said that they admitted that they did anything wrong. There was no intentional cheating on tests. And how dare those things be put out in the public for my daughter to see that Charter Oak cheats when she finishes her NWEA and gets the immediate grade right then and tells me how proud she is to have improved by 14 points since the fall, saying, Mommy, I didn't cheat. Why does it say that on the front of the newspaper today? Shame on you guys. You don't even have policies in place to show how you should handle a situation like this. But the answer should not be that you fire someone or demote someone or move them to another school. If you're interested in seeing someone succeed at their job and you're a supportive administration, you make sure that they have what they need to fulfill what they need for their staff. Give them the tools. Don't give them a noose and hang them with all these tiny loopholes. Seriously. You guys are supposed to be here for us, and our kids need these people, especially the special ed students. Those teachers are like their family. Those teachers spend more time with those children than their own family do. Dr. Lathan, you appear to hate this town, and it's obvious that you think nothing of us. That's a, it's obvious that, that you think nothing of us now, and you'll think nothing right of us there. in your next position. How dare you take these people away from our kids in the middle of this school year and shame on you for not supporting these people who've dedicated their lives to our children. Sharon Cruz. <laughs> to borrow your own words, President Cloyd and Dr. Lathan, it would be wrong and cowardly not to investigate the irregularities in all the ways that the P-card policy has not been followed. Ignoring all these irregularities might amount to a cover-up. I recently acquired 41 of the 70 receipts I requested. 29 of them cannot be located. You might start your cover-up investigation right there. Policy is that cardholders must write on all receipts the purpose of the charge and the recipients. This information was not written on 29 of the 40 receipts, which is not unusual. When was the last time you ever noticed that this required information isn't on most receipts? I would certainly like to know which three people eight meals for $48, $48, and $65 at a well-known steakhouse for a total of $233, including taxes, compliments of the taxpayers of District 150. Policy requires that Dr. Lathan give prior authorization for any purchase over $500 or for charges of more than $1,000 a month. Can you produce proof of these authorizations? And many were required. Policy states that the superintendent must approve any transactions made by phone or over the internet. I guess that even includes all those calls to food vendors. There's more, but I only have two minutes. Just don't be cowardly or wrong. Investigate. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here to give five reasons why you, Mr. Rick Cloyd, should step down as president of the school board. Number one, number one, you recently made a sexist remark to a mother who called you from Charter Oak School by saying to her, do you have work outside the home. 
what does that have to do with anything? You need to take some sensitivity training. That's a totally improper question to ask a female in this uh, workplace during this environment at this time. Number two, you've, you've conducted and you've allowed to conduct a witch hunt of the Charter Oak staff, administration, children, and parents in this district by appointing your attorneys who make probably over a million dollars this year at your behest. A million dollars we're paying these people to do your bidding. I mean, that's like having your own private law firm. Uh, they, they authorize or you authorize a, a personal letter uh, to be written to them by your attorneys to a mother who wanted to come to the parent university and you said she couldn't come or they said she couldn't come because she was a parent of a Holy Family student. And that's one of the reasons why we have the parent university is to draw people into this district, not exclude those people. And that falls on you. Number three. The uh, handling of this P card thing, the Sharon Cruz, you refuse to investigate, you patronize uh, Dr. Lathan on this issue, and it's going to be handed over to somebody else. Somebody will investigate this. I promise you, somebody other than you will investigate this. This is not a dead issue. This is pathetic what goes on in those credit cards. Number four. Treating citizens differently in this community. You tell me I can't look at the audience and you let three people last week stand and look at the audience and present their material. You have been on my case, you've been on Mr. Sierra's case ever since you've gotten this office. You are totally out of Thank line. You. Thank you Number very much. Five. Thank okay. you very much. Your time is up. Jeffrey Atkins Dutro. Well, you certainly had the opportunity to do the right thing and you chose not to, whereas this could have been the ending. This is now only the beginning. I'm outraged that our teachers are being used as scapegoats to cover up systemic District-wide confusion over testing and testing protocols not limited to the ISAT. Our union offered to work with the administration and the Board of Education starting immediately to ensure all district employees are well-versed in all testing protocols. The district refrained them from taking advantage of our offer. The teachers involved in the ISAT investigation did not change answers for students. They did not tell students which answers to choose. Our teachers did their best to provide the accommodations necessary to ensure students performed to their full potential. If mistakes were made, they were inadvertent and unintentional. In order to maintain the integrity of the district's investigation, our teachers remain quiet, even amid the misleading and inflammatory remarks made to the media by the district's attorney. For their hard work, honesty, professionalism, and integrity, our teachers have paid a terrible price. That said, whereas the district has tried this case in the media, we've held our cards close to the vest and will refrain from showing them until we come before an unbiased arbitrator. I'm proud of our teachers. While the district lost control of this situation and quickly transformed a molehill into a colossal disaster, the teachers under investigation, teachers directly impacted by the investigation, and teachers across the district indirectly impacted by this investigation stuck to the business at hand, educating our students. The community has it right. The time for change is long overdue. We look forward to working with them well beyond the here and now to ensure our schools are a reflection of our community <coughs> and not vice versa. Short term, we're going to do everything in our power to ensure our teachers, hardworking, honest, forthright teachers, are vindicated. And believe me, they will be. East type.
at your last meeting, I asked this board if you wanted a climate of fear within your organization. The superintendent responded by saying that if they haven't done anything wrong, they wouldn't be in fear. So let's suppose for just a moment that's true. Then in the superintendent's own words, that means every employee must be doing something wrong because the fear is ubiquitous in District 150. Before I got back to my seat at the last meeting, I had a message from someone I don't know thanking me for my comments. The comment was, we're afraid to say anything, and it is liberating and empowering to know that someone on the outside is noticed. Don't think my efforts are only about John Wetterow. I came to a meeting over a year ago and had these same thoughts. I got busy, decided there wasn't anything I could do. So in part, I blame myself and my inaction for where we stand today. Having witnessed management by intimidation in other settings, I promised myself years ago I would no longer let such bullying continue if I had any opportunity to speak out and stop it. And let there be no mistake, management by intimidation is bullying. I find it ironic that one of the professional development sessions the superintendent brought into the district was entitled, Attack the Bully. We would never tolerate bullying in our schools. Why do we and you as a board tolerate it in the management of our schools? Intimidation management does not work. You end up with a workforce afraid to think for themselves. And the larger the organization, the more crippling it is for the organization. Employees need leadership and clear expectations. And yes, when they don't meet those expectations, there need to be consequences. But everyone deserves to be treated with respect. It's time for this superintendent to go and for the intimidation management to stop. I plead with you as a board to put a stop to the bullying. You have this incredible opportunity to create an environment of positive change. Look at all these people behind me. How many times have you seen that many people turn out for a school board meeting? Thank you. Mimi McDonald. Would you please have a seat? Why? Because You're that's not the way my we parents. do. No. This I'm is I'm a taxpayer. If I choose to stand, I see nothing wrong with that. This is the way I've always gone to board meetings. I've never had a chair to sit in. And why do you have special chairs for District 150 personnel who support you? Now, can I go on or are you going to go on about Please go on. Thank you. Okay. I read in today's paper uh, at its January 13th meeting, board members delayed action on possible discipline of Wettenauer until he had a chance to respond to those to the allegations. Well, you know what? Why didn't you talk to him before you made the allegations? Don't you think you did things really, really backwards? I mean, you still haven't talked to the man. Going on here, it says neither Wettenauer or his attorney, now Williamson, has replied to the board's offer other than through a formal response. What more do you want? He gave you a formal response. But no, you want to keep trying to meet with him and meet with him. If you'd done your job before, you wouldn't need anything more than the formal response. He has responded to you. And I hope he responds to you with a big, fat lawsuit for defamation of characters as well as those two teachers. Gary Skinner. I'm Gary Skinner and I'm a father of three kids and I got uh, one goes to Peoria High and he, uh, he's in the top ten and I got two other kids that are special ed students. Dr. Layton, you have something always special uh, education students. I think you should become where you, <coughs> wait a minute, you have something against special ed students. I think you do because where you came from, you had the same problem with them. How can you judge them by 
normal students and their grades, if people if people weren't given such high raises and pinch uh, bonuses, they could have salt for it wouldn't be so icy at the schools. And you and uh, board member, Mr. President, you have too many yes sirs, not enough no sirs. And I think it's a time that they do away with Dr. Lathan and the board. Thank you. If you would hold the microphone so the webcast will pick you up or sit down so that the microphone can hear you, um, you won't be broadcast on the webcast if you're not speaking into the mic. Thank you. Mary Beth Cunningham. I just want to start off by saying thank you for hearing me and taking the time for this. This is hard for me to do because I am a product of District 150, K through 12. I am the daughter and the granddaughter of lifelong District 150 teachers and administrators, and I take a lot of pride in where I come from. So it's tough for me to address the board and our superintendent for difficult things, so I appreciate this. Most importantly, though, I'm the mother of two beautiful boys who are not yet school-aged, and I would like for them to go to Northmore, where we live. And because of that, I've tried tirelessly to pin down why it is that a group of well-educated board members would take such an apathetic approach toward the practices which go against the grain of evidence and against the moral fiber of most people. And during my brainstorming about this, a common theme kept, theme kept coming up, and it's called the Milgram Study, and I'm sure a lot of you are aware of it. In 1961, in an attempt to determine why, why so many good people followed suit in the Holocaust, Stanley Milgram performed some studies which yielded statistically significant results with high validity and reliability. That sometimes good people follow orders of an authority figure even when no threat is posed against them should they deviate for their own moral convictions. A scientist in these studies gave orders to a volunteer to give a shock to someone who was an actor if they got the wrong answer. And knowing that this person could leave, he still stayed and did that, even though it was painful to him. And it happened over and over and over, and these really good people were doing what they thought weren't, wasn't such a good thing to do. And I would like to know and think that I've researched all of you. You're good people, I know you are. You're involved in our community. It's not too late to say, hey, listen, let's take a step back and see this climate of fear that's happening in our schools that inhibits our teachers from teaching the way that they can. Dan Devil. past 50 days it's been it's become incredibly clear to me that this situation with Mr. Waterhour is just a symptom of a much larger problem and issues within the district's administration. We sent a FOIA request asking for the testing policies mandated by the ISBE including sanctions and disciplinary measures that would be used if testing irregularities occurred. Let me read you the response. The district has not, does not possess records responsive to your request. Superintendent Lathan, you talked to the board meeting last, week, or last time about holding principals accountable to your expectations based on testing regulations that the ISBE requires. Now we find out that you don't possess any records of a policy that same body mandates for the district. Well, Ms. Lathan, you can't have it both ways. You can't, on one hand, use ISBE regulations as a weapon to target people you don't like, and on the other hand, ignore ISBE policy rep mandates when it's convenient for you. And if you actually do have these policies and didn't provide it, then it's clear that you're not fulfilling FOIA requests in good faith. 
you're trying to hide information from the public and are in violation of federal law. And to the board, our elected representatives, we urge you to investigate this matter immediately and hold Superintendent Lathan accountable for this clear lack of performance. Savino Sierra. Sierra, 1708 South Stanley, on the far south side. When I say everybody's having a state of whatever at this time, I'd like to uh, say a few remarks on the state of this school district 150. And uh, I believe it's, it's about the worst uh, school board and the superintendent, office of superintendent in all my born years. And I think I'm older than any of you people sitting up there. And as far as wisdom goes, I think I got a little more than you people have because of, <laughs> of your uh, ideas and what you try to promote that isn't getting us any place fast. Now you, and now you're trying to get the city to help you sell those um, houses over there in, in the Heights. Well, <clears throat> you say that, that was of another regime. Some of you people th that are sitting there were here at that time when they wanted to put uh, Glen Oak School over with the park. And, uh, and one of the most uh, uh, worst things that the superintendent and, and you disciples went along with him is that you you kill the neighborhood school system and uh, you you lost a lot of people you know you you people are living in your uh, cozy homes and you have all these little kids crossing uh, dangerous streets and uh, walking in the cold weather you know I'm glad you canceled yesterday but I was hoping they you'd go and escort some of these kids to school and find out what your actions actually do. You're ruining the, uh, the uh, reputation of this District 150. Thank you, sir. And we gotta, we gotta change our ways and uh, what we're trying to do. And I'm against uh, using that money or that tax money to uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, get on to Central High School because I'm gonna- Sir, your time is up, thank you. I'm, I'm going to- uh, talk against that at city council. So I, I'd like to ask the superintendent again that she should resign. If not, you people on the board should. Thank you, sir. Dr. Lathan responds to the audience presentations. I'll, I'll um, share my, uh, allow you to respond back to uh, the, the audience. Okay, fine, thank you. Uh, just, just, she asked me to respond on an issue that was raised just here and I'm gonna try and do that for you. This is in regard to the question about, uh, I believe it was raised, Ms. Mr. Duggal. All right, I'll speak up. On January 14, 2014, Peoria Public Schools responded to a FOIA request from Teresa Kohler seeking, quote, a copy of the testing policies as required by the ISBE Professional Testing Practices for Educators, ISAT as noted, unquote, in that publication. 
The response to the request stated that, quote, the district does not possess records responsive to your request. To clarify that response, Peoria Public Schools, through its legal team and the Board of Education Policy Committee review and maintain policies in accordance with Illinois School Code and the Illinois State Board of Education regulations. While a professional testing practices for educators handbook suggests that, quote, districts must therefore have in place a local testing policy that includes sanctions and disciplinary measures that will be used if testing irregularities occur, unquote, the Illinois School Code and ISBE regulations have no such corresponding mandate. Therefore, Peoria Public Schools has viewed the handbook statement as guidance and has chosen to stand by existing board policies that comply with ISBE regulations and the Illinois School Code, our district bargaining contracts, principal employee contracts, and Illinois teacher tenure laws that impact both teachers and administrators to guide board decisions on all employee discipline. These policies allow the Board of Education to review each incident prior to making a determination about any resulting disciplinary action so that all factors in an employee's personnel record may be considered. As stated in Mr. Ms. Kohler's FOIA response, Peoria Public Schools does not possess records responsive to that request. And I hope that clarifies that. Thank you. Any presentations or suggestions by board members? Any reports from board committees? There being none, could I have a motion to adjourn? We are adjourned.